I'm here with singer Lisa Lamb backstage at the Irish Arts Center. She's about to do her second concert. She had one last night. Uh, how did the first performance go? It was great. It was amazing. Um, amazing show. Uh, what a beautiful space to be in. It's a really intimate, mm -hmm. beautiful sounding room. Um, even acoustically, it has this really bright, beautiful clarity to it. And uh, the sound designer here at the Irish Arts Centre is just a dream. And uh, it was a beautiful show. Um, it's really special to be here in New York, uh, for me personally and creatively as well. Um, I love New York, I love being back in America. Um, having been here for a, a, a very um, intense period of time with Celtic Woman, right. it's lovely to be back again and be here with my own um, original music as mm -hmm. well. Um, New York is always very special um, and I've been here for a few days now and uh, strolling up towards Radio City I had to kind of take a moment and say, wow, I've I've performed there a couple of times and um, that's lovely just to have that sort of inner moment with yourself and but I, I actually was speaking to somebody last night and I was, they said they remember me saying many many years ago when we worked together in, in Dublin on a theatre piece that I had said I would love, always love to come to the Irish Arts Centre. Mm -hmm. it, it's, a, it's a real melting pot of creativity and wonderful artists who I would really admire and aspire to be like and, and people I you know loved, would love to collaborate with and um, I love the people here. It's, it's, a, it's a beautiful place. It's like being at home. I'm sure they're saying the exact same thing about you actually. <laughs> <laughs> now why don't you talk a little bit about uh, when you first decided that you wanted to be a performer. I know that you also have some acting in your, in your background, in your repertoire. Yes, well, I started when I was very young. Um, I went to a theatre school when I was three years old, and um, I'm the youngest of ten children, so my mom brought me along, maybe just thinking I'd enjoy it, and maybe thought, I don't know whether she'll stick with it or not, Or, mm -hmm. but uh, being the youngest of ten children, um, I think she was probably delighted that I said I'd have a necklace or, you know, find something that I loved. and. Um, so really going there so young, I think it was just all I knew and uh, I took to it very quickly and very instantly and um, so I really it's all, I, it's all I've ever known mm -hmm. really and uh, so all through my childhood, um, theatre and music were really really part of my, of my growing up and um, have really carved the path uh, to where I am today to this very moment. And, um, after high school I went and studied uh, drama in mm -hmm. Trinity College in Dublin and that was amazing. It was very, very intense. It was a degree um, in, in acting and in performing. There was an element of music to it um, in that they want the actor and the performer to leave there with a very, very strong kind of umbrella sense of what it is to be a, a full rounded performer. So there was a, a, you know, a, a big kind of, you know, bit of time dedicated to, to music uh, mm -hmm. within the course but it was a heavily classical acting course with a lot of physicality with movement with dance so it was all the things I love really um, yeah. but I found it incredibly immersive and it was you know it was like walking the plank every day you were really kind of going to the edge of, of your comfort zones all the time and having to really dive in and, and learn but that's how you expand and how you grow as an actor so and as a performer absolutely and you were um nominated for an Irish Times Theatre Award. That must have been thrilling. Yeah, that was really, really special time. Um, I had just graduated from college, so it was one of the first pieces of professional theatre I did, um, mm -hmm. you know, having having studied in Trinity. And uh, the piece was amazing. It was with Rough Magic Theatre Company, who are this really fantastic established company in Ireland. Um, the Irish Arts Centre would know them well. And uh, we did this beautiful piece that Arthur Reardon wrote, and uh, it was about Ireland during uh, neutrality. Ireland was neutral during World War Two, mm -hmm. and it was a musical based on this this time, this period of time in history. And um, really funny, full of puns and all kinds of rhyme and meter. And I played this young ingenue from County Cork um, with a green coat and a little green berry. Um, and I sang my way through it like a little songbird. And <laughs> it was beautiful. And again, it was a it was just a. a a, a beautiful moment in time and it's a real kind of landmark for me um, in terms of my journey as a performer um, and then to be nominated was just kind of a, a, a fantastic bonus and a, and a real kind of for me you know a sense of um, just achievement really you know and again I think when you're doing something you love when those accolades come to you as well they're not they're 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 
their bonuses or their, their little sparkles of light that, that get shone and it's that shine and you kind of feel they're just well what could, well you know they're just extra beautiful things that you know I don't think I think if you were to only focus on those things mm -hmm. um, the work might be different or the process might be different and I love the process of making something and then you brought it up uh, briefly in the beginning, but you also spent a good number of years with Celtic Woman. What was that experience like? It was amazing, yeah. It was fantastic. And um, it was different for me because I was coming from a, a heavily theatre background. Mm -hmm. And yes, singing was a huge part of my life. And, and I would always love those moments in theatre where music and voice and, and drama would, would merge and movement and physicality. And mm -hmm. um, not always, they weren't necessarily musical theatre things, but uh, plays with music. Right. Um, so I had worked with the amazing David Dennis, uh, mm -hmm. who's now a very, very long-term beautiful friend, um, on a play in the Abbey Theatre, in our National Theatre in Dublin, called The Shock Run. Mm -hmm. And that's when our paths first came together. And also in the cast was the wonderful Maureen Nesbitt, and we shared a dressing room. And at the time, she had said to me that Celtic Woman was beginning its journey, and she was going to take on this beautiful project called Celtic Woman, and she was going to go on the road, and uh, David was part of it. and. So that was a lovely connection we had at the beginning, and about seven years on, uh, David and I, I was watching from afar at all the accolades and mm -hmm. all the glowing, um, beautiful work that they were doing, and the music, and how America was its home, and kind of looking across the pond thinking, wow, that's just amazing. And David um, and I, we sat together and we talked about me coming on board, and it was different for him and it was different for me. Uh, for him as well, I was an actor coming to this not just a full-time singer, mm -hmm. but somebody who was coming from a, a slightly different background probably right. to what he would normally um, have put together. Uh, but um, knowing my voice as he did and knowing, um, I suppose, what I could bring to, to the show, um, I was so thrilled and I felt very much in safe hands and immediately said yes. And it was great. Wonderful. Did that um, similar background kind of bond you with student Susan McFadden, who also did some acting prior. That's right, but, yeah. Susan and I, we were in the same theatre school as, as kids and uh, I think, you know, what's great is Celtic Woman was, it, you know, it is this hugely successful show and mm -hmm. to come on board when it's had its had a, had a this amazing journey already, um, you really bring, you've got to bring your best, you've got to bring everything, which I would normally to everything I do, you've got to apply yourself in the right way. And uh, the same with Susan, when Susan came, it was just, you know, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the wonderful thing about the girls in Celtic Woman is everybody's individual and unique. Everybody has this beautiful energy and this amazing voice. And yeah. everyone's voice is different. And, you know, Susan is this amazing powerhouse of a singer and a gorgeous girl. But when that, when that all comes together, man, that's lightning in a bottle. Yeah. <laughs> it really is. It really is. Yeah, thank you. Oh. And now your first solo album, uh, Hiding Away. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about that and what that was like stepping out of Celtic Woman to do your own to your own yeah, music. well, it was great, and I think since I was very young, I've always wanted to make an album. Um, it's a big, big ambition of mine. Um, I think initially I thought I'd love to make an album, but actually, what I was really saying to myself is that I want to delve into the world of, of, of writing my own material and being a songwriter. And through my time with Celtic Woman, I spent fleeting moments and longer times in Nashville, mm -hmm. and it was a place I fell madly in love with on my time in America. Um, many cities had that effect on me, New York being one of course. But uh, I made some good connections there and some friends and uh, I had some friends there already. So there was this great energy um, and something about it was, was telling me that that's where I should go and do this. So, um, you know, my journey with Cel Celtic Woman was incredible in itself but it's also what brought me to Nashville. So there's lots of cross-pollination and, and I'm hugely thankful for my time with Celtic Woman, which allowed me to really fall in love with being in the US and um, and then going there to make the album. So it was, Nashville is a really, really special place. Do you have a, a favourite song off the album? Is there one that you really enjoy performing? I think, well, I've, I wrote a few songs for it and eventually two of them made it onto the album and I covered some beautiful songs. Um, they were all original songs by men. I said if I'm not going to put my own songs on it fully. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to try songs that are not necessarily hugely well known, but they've got to be sung by a man so that I can put a female perspective on them. But there's wonderful artists like Gabe Dixon, Brett Denon, uh, Peter Bradley Adams. They're all people who are based pretty much in Nashville. Um, so I felt very connected to the music when I was there mm -hmm. and, and making these songs. 
Um, Heaven is a beautiful song. It's a, it's a Brett Denham song and lyrically it's it's really, really beautiful. And when I released the album, I, I work with a charity in Ireland called Alone, which is for older people who are, are dealing with loneliness and we're all going to get old at some point. Hopefully we'll get to that point of being old. But, right. you know, <laughs> you know, I think um, the elderly are, are hugely vulnerable and, and very lonely. And uh, this, this volunteer charity are just amazing. They work with people. They have this amazing outreach uh, network. And I've been working with them for on and off for a good few years now. And I thought the song would be perfect uh, to sort of align with them. And so all the proceeds of, of the video and the song Heaven went to, went to Alone. So that was a nice incentive to to start the process of this new music and to kind of give good karma. And That's amazing. Good, yeah. That's very sweet. Thank you. Do you um, have a preference? Into, do you like doing more intimate shows? Did you like the the big grand scale? What, do you or do you or do you well, prefer? Do you like both of them? Well, I love both. I think you know, having had the experience of Celtic Woman and, and you know walking past Radio City, I kind of had mm -hmm. to take a breath and say, wow, that's, you know, it's a vast and very historical, iconic venue to play. And, uh, oh, it's amazing. The big places are amazing. Yeah. I mean, the atmosphere, the energy. And if you bring the right energy, um, you get so much back from the audience. But that, that carries through with an intimate gig. Uh, with my own music, I'm really loving the intimate, I have to say, because um, firstly, with your own music, and it's it's something I've, I've loved learning about, performing as myself and not necessarily as a character is that you can't really hide behind a mask. Mm -hmm. You I'm not a character, I'm not, you know, right. Laura in Dolls House, um, I'm I'm Lisa Lamb on stage mm -hmm. and um I learn a lot of, an awful lot about myself in the intimate venues. Um and it's lovely to be able to really make eye contact and really see people. So I, I'm loving it and I think that's why I, I really love the space here in New York in the Irish Art Centre. It's perfect. It's a ninety nine seater. It's intimate. The acoustics are beautiful. Um, and I can see every single person out there and and bring them along with me on my musical journey. That's probably even even more inviting as a performer to be able to do that. Absolutely. I think you learn a lot more about yourself when you can really look at your audience <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know and sort of feel where they want to go with you and um, you know even writing set lists like I would write a set list before my show and mm -hmm. um, but it kind of takes a very loose shape once I'm on stage and um, because I f I'm trying to feel the audience and where they want to go and maybe what a song has has evoked in them and a story might come mm. from that and then somebody might say something and you know so it's good to have a set list but I, I really believe in the personal connection with people and every audience is different every performance is different and every night your voice is different I mean it's the same it's the same instrument but yeah. it's uh, you know some nights you might um, you know you might have had a, a, a stressful day that you but I find though with my music that I'm able to leave everything kind of behind me if mm -hmm. uh, Good and bad, uh, you know. I think the music is what I serve, and the words and the lyrics are just so important to me because they have to be. And I think having trained as an actor, you know, it's it's all about the story. And right. Got it. Got it. Even if you're being really still, and it's not a lot of physicality going on, or but to allow the stillness to kind of paint the canvas with the words and with with the melody and the lyrics, and yeah, I think that's um, the intimate. Venues are, are kind of where you can really learn the craft for sure. And the same way that you're putting your whatever you have going on in your day, you may be bringing somebody out of the bat that they've had in their day by your performance. Totally, so. totally. And I think um, when the music is is given in a way that is very truthful, mm -hmm. um, people see all that they need to see in it, or or not, or leave stuff behind that they don't need to deal with right then, or else it can evoke. And it's lovely to see people really, I mean, you can see the molecules in the room changing and their mm -hmm. faces and the, the, there might be tears, there could be laughter and it's a, it's, a, it's a very, it's a real privilege to get to do this and uh, I, I feel, I was saying this yesterday actually uh, to a lovely man here, Nick Quaif, who's associated with the Arts Centre, um, I said, you know, it's wonderful to be in New York and be here as myself, as Lisa Lam, mm -hmm. to be here performing as Lisa Lam and to be able to sing my own material here in a city that is just layered and layered with amazing performers who come in and out of here all the time. 
and you're one of them. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Brian. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> now, that would be a good way to end it, but um, you uh, are going to have another project coming up after you do your tour, right? There's an acting float like a butterfly. That's right. Well, I've just actually I've been in the middle of filming this beautiful film at the moment. Um, so, yes, there's been lots of diverse projects happening at the yeah. same time. There's been a bit of plates spinning. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, my music is always at the centre of it. Uh, I've just finished a, a beautiful show in the Abbey Theatre in Dublin, uh, our National Theatre, with um, the current new directors of the Abbey, Graeme McLaren and Neil Murray. And Graeme directed it. It's a, fi a film that's been adapted for stage called Jimmy's Hall. Mm -hmm and a beautiful adaptation was drawn for the theatre and the role was amazing. It's a story actually about a man called Jimmy Grelton who um, in the 1930s was illegally deported from Ireland by the Irish state. Uh, he was sent back to Manhattan and never came home. Um, he had been in New York for, for 10 years. He came home with a gramophone mm -hmm. and with many stories and he built a little parish hall in a tiny town called in Efferna in County Leitrim. And um, basically the the parish, the, the, the state, a local hall with jazz music was seen as a very, 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 very dangerous thing mm. and uh, something that was possibly, you know, polluting the minds of, of the youth of the parish at the time. And uh, because it wasn't a parochial hall that was run by the government or by the, by the church, um, it was seen as, a, as, as something that really was uncomfortably uh, established in this very small town. And uh, in a very long story, story short, he was deported and uh, he came back to New York. So it's nice to be here. I've just been yeah. telling the story on that side of the pond and now I'm, I'm, I'm walking the streets where, where he spent his final days. Um, so I've just finished that with and actually a, a beautiful woman called Brigitte Nocton, who is an incredible actress, Shano singer, a beautiful person. He's also here in town uh, doing a show with the Irish Arts Centre. And when we came on board with the project, we said, I said, Bridget, I'm going to be in New York. I'm so excited. And she said, hey, I'm going to be in New York. When are you going to be there? And so we realized we're in town at the same time. That's so which funny. Which is lovely. And uh, so from there, I went on to this uh, wonderful film called Float Like a Butterfly, which is currently uh, um, on location at the moment. And I've just spent some time uh, filming before I came to New York, uh, which was great. A uh, beautiful story written by this amazing woman called Carmel Winters. And it's about the traveling community in Ireland uh, in the 60s and 70s. Um, so it's a very important story uh, being told and I am feeling very proud to be part of it. Amazing. Thank you so much for taking time to Thank do you this Brian. before your show. I'm very much looking forward to it. I can't wait to sing for you later. Th and I can't wait to hear it. Trust <laughs> Thank me. You. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me.